Yeah. Don't be afraid to share your story. Mm-hmm. I think so many people are. Um, and kind of the freeing point was me. I told multiple stories in this, right? Mm-hmm. Um, there, there's something like powerful because like we all watch people. We watch 100%. movies. Mm-hmm. We listen to things. They're all stories, Everything's right? Story. And everybody's so ashamed of where they're at in a certain way. And you just shouldn't be, man, because everybody's struggling. Everybody's trying to figure it out. And if you just share authentically where you are with your story, mm-hmm. um, like that's that's what I love doing. I love taking people who just don't know how to, or maybe they do, but they just need a little bit of tweaking on it. And I love I love exemplifying that and blowing up. Welcome back to another episode of Entrepreneur Unleashed. I'm so happy you're here because I'm excited to have this gentleman in, in, in the studio. Jeff Cunningham is, is an individual who, well, I'm, I'm going to let him tell it best. But before we get into that, my name is Edward Collins. I'm the host of um, Uplevel Entrepreneur and Entrepreneur Unleashed. And we're here today to give you an opportunity to do something that I believe is necessary in business. And that is to, to learn vicariously through others. If you want to shortcut your journey to success, success, you want to do that by learning and studying the people who have been through what you're going through and have made it through to the other side. That being said, let's jump right in. Jeff, thank you so much for, for coming here and, and being willing to have a, uh, just a sit-down chat, one-on-one, get an opportunity, give me an opportunity to learn about you and, and the audience to learn about you as well. Yeah, no, definitely. Thank you so much for this. I'm, I'm overwhelmed by how your great energy, how beautiful this is. So, and the coffee too, <laughs> ties into, you got it all going on here. Well, I appreciate it. Now, I, I don't, obviously, I'm still learning a lot about you. Um, I know the audience, there's going to be some audience members who have said, well, I've been following Jeff forever. And there's some audience member who maybe have never heard of you. Right. So tell me a little bit about some of your backstory. Like what, what, what has made Jeff, Jeff and, and how you got here? Yeah, so I mean, most who know, and I'll probably tell it this way too, um, you know, I think we all go through life sometimes where we always think like, oh, this is how we're supposed to be and both supposed to settle. Mm -hmm. When I was young, I used to be driving, my parents used to drive me, I used to look outside and I used to see all these brands and logos all the time thinking, man, who's behind all that? That was my curious thing. Mm -hmm. But as certain things are told to you during school and being uh, made fun of, called retarded, picked on, all that stuff, you kind of start believing something. I, I wound up developing a, a chip on my shoulder mm. that um, there was actually only one girl I wanted to marry. She was a pastor's daughter. Uh, I actually don't t- share that too much. And there was, um, and my mom was the only one to meet here. Was at a church we went to. Long story short, um, my mom wound up dying of breast cancer um, with no life insurance. Um, and I watched my dad um, try and save the house. Really die for a little bit and I left um you know I left giving up the dreams to play football because I was kind of I was coding HTML back in the day uh was big geek my mom was a genius um I actually don't give her enough credit I started talking about her more now but part of the reason why I coded HTML and did my first websites all back in the day Mm -hmm. and loved it she she uh she championed me that like that was my talent after Mm -hmm. she passed away um, kind of like the, the norm of like kind of the society was like, hey, you're a geek for doing all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So I felt to get girls, I'd have to play football and get sports. But there was only one mm-hmm. girl I liked. If you ever seen the movie The Notebook? Yes. Very similar to The Notebook. She'll okay. get mad if she watches it. It's, it's the <laughs> angel story. But basically got all the way to the point where I asked her to marry me. And she was already engaged to this other guy who was in the Navy, right? Uh, Still perfect moment for me, not for her. Yeah. Um, but present day, all that stuff um, by becoming at a semi-pro team, I wound up starting as quarterback. I wound up to find a few different odds of people telling me I couldn't do stuff. Okay. And then um, six years ago, I think it was, I don't even know when it really was, um, my older brother, Jason, he actually had the life, the Range Rover, everything. This is mm-hmm. probably why, and I was mentioned before, you know, I kind of got it, I, I kind of hated on all the, the guys with the fake Lambos in the cars. Right, Because right. I watched my brother have him be dead inside. And it was mm-hmm. kind of almost like an insecurity. So I, I wound up moving to Connecticut where I'm from. Um, I'm in Miami now, but... Moved him there. Uh, me and him had a dream to build a coffee shop music studio. Wrote on Together. a napkin. Together. Yeah. He said, Jeff, I was a teacher at a behavioral middle school at the time. He said, You Jeff, were. I was. Yeah. yeah, I, was yeah. Te- I was a substitute teacher. Because now th- now you say stuff, you go in big. People look you up. <laughs> I had a girl on Clubhouse. Do you know what Clubhouse yeah, is? Yeah, yeah, So I had a girl on Clubhouse. Like, Jeff, you were a substitute teacher. I was like, all right, all right, yeah. Hey, yeah let me clarify. Yeah, yeah. clarify. You know, so I, I get that. But I wound up, um, I wound up, um, he said, hey, you've always had a lemonade stand. You've always been, I, I, I know all the network. Uh-huh. You could build a business. So okay. we decided to do it. Long story short, right off the whole blueprint. Uh, he was there for my sister's wedding. She was about to get married. Mm-hmm. Two days later, I go to wake him up um, to get a haircut. And we we were going to build a coffee shop. This is why I love coffee. A coffee mm-hmm. shop, even though I probably don't need it. Coffee <laughs> shop, music studio. 
Um, it was the idea. And I went to wake him up, and my older brother, those who know, didn't wake up. He died on drugs, fentanyl. Um, so sorry. When that happened, um, middle school student I taught at committed suicide the same week. I'm in therapy. Um, the lady says, you have ADD, OCD. I said, fine. Um, and although I think everybody has ADD now. I mean, yeah. with everything and 20 seconds everywhere, right? Yeah. But she said that. I went home. I was lost. I went home to my dad. My dad always good with advice. Um, I, I brought the, um, the book. Uh, I had a piece of paper in my hand. My dad said, no, you've been through a lot. He gave me a book, Power of Subconscious Mind. You ever read that yes. book? Mm -hmm. Great book. You can watch it on YouTube and stuff. And then he showed me a video by a guy named uh, Grant Cardone. People mm -hmm. get mad at me always sharing this part of the story. No, please. But he, he's the top G, okay? Yes, 100%. Grant Cardone is the top G to me because I didn't want to live at the time. I pray God, I don't care if I wake up. There's a video. If anybody's depressed, you can search Grant Cardone Depression. So did you ever see that you, video? You shared that video with me. Yeah. You oh, you did. Oh, so you I didn't see it until I shared it to I you. I had not seen it before. Okay, yeah. You shared that video yep. with me. It was transformative. I mean, right? that's a transformative video. So can I tell you something? So John... Uh, a ledger of C, uh, T Mobile. Do you know? Yes, who he yes. Is? Okay. I shared it on Clubhouse. Okay. Good guy. He actually bought me my MacBook Pro. That's here. Okay. He's, okay. He said a lot of nice words. Said a lot of mean words about me. But he knows how to <laughs> vibe me up. But um, he said, "Hey Jeff, can you share that video to me? Someone for a friend." And I uh -huh. shared it with him. And dude, anytime I share that, people say that 100%. and they say that. And uh, especially entrepreneurs like us. Exactly. There's always days that are down. And Grant's just being Grant. But it's so good. People are calling in with everything. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the Young Hustlers video. If anybody's yeah, seeing yep. it, people be like, this is the right one. I'm like, that's the right that's one. It. Dude, I literally tried to drive uh, my car. Didn't want to live. I thought about driving my car off the, the thing because everybody was saying when my brother died, it's not your fault. And all I kept hearing, it's your fault. It's your right. fault. It's your fault. Mm -hmm. This is the brother I worked at the school, thought I could train and give him to them, and now he's not alive. I, I think I don't want to I don't want to interrupt because no. this is very passionate, but I do think what you just said was really interesting because – I think when when we're confronted with loss, yeah. especially for from uh, for other people confronted with loss, we're almost like struggling for what words to share. Yeah. And I think what you just said is really important. You should not share things like it's not your fault because yeah. there's a problem with what the person is hearing. Yeah. And ultimately, if you you put that phrase "your fault," "your fault," even if it's right. it, it has the the preface "it's not," that that could be. Yeah, no, that's Very. so true. And actually, do you ever do NLP or any yeah. of that stuff? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so learning all that senses. Mm -hmm. This is before I got into growth. My brother uh, used to do Tony Robbins and say all that. And Tony mm -hmm. Robbins, to me, always looked like this perfect guy who was so good. Oh. So I never, like, related to him at first, mm -hmm. right? Because uh, I didn't know. And so, but I related to Grant because Grant just had this way he did. Yeah. And I got into growth. I got out of bed. I wrote that I'm going to build the biggest franchise ever and honor my brother called Kokomo Jays. Mm -hmm. um, you don't give up in America at the level of Starbucks. Okay. So you got to be careful now. We're getting bigger. Starbucks, watch <laughs> out, man. They're going to be doing it. But, um, and, that, and you don't give up the journey. Watch. And yes. since then, this is it. We're actually now going to be launching, hopefully, maybe something at this level, like a Kokomo J studio mm -hmm. uh, for top level things to have people talk about because Kokomo means heart, mind, and soul. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have people talk about what's on their heart, their mind, and their, their soul. And um, we're basically going to do as a top funnel lead flow before the, when the market's right and then buy a few locations and, and hopefully build something like this. I love the concept because yeah. it, it's going to be essentially a coffee shop yeah. with an ability to have like almost a studio in the center. You know, it could it. just be a coffee maker with, yeah, the, with the studio. studio right. like this, yeah. And the, where it came from, honestly, um, after I lost my brother, I was lost. I bought a coffee grinder. I learned all this stuff. I went with all the, the, the hippie coffee kind of sewer guys. I, mm -hmm. I studied it for six months and realized if I went to build a business, mm -hmm. I wouldn't know anything business. I, I watched people... And I studied, here's the thing, and you know this, you study people's successes, but study their fails even harder. That's more. I yes, have a book yes. coming out called Getting Rich Recession. There's a chapter where I'm sitting in with this lady. She's a Bolivian girl. Uh, I feel bad because business went out of business. She's like, I, I'm Bolivian food. I love it. I go, did you do any market research about this? She's like, right. no. no. And the place was empty, dude. It used yeah. to be like a market. You know Margaritaville? No. Oh, it's yeah, like, Margaritaville. So it used yeah, to be yeah. one of those. They switched over to a Bolivian restaurant. Nobody yeah. showed up. The place closed down. Yeah. So but that's a, lot that's a of story of a lot of business owners. Well, and because, but they're not educated. Exactly. They don't know. Like even me at that time, nothing, but I even knew enough to build this business. Like mm -hmm. I would, I would have been that same person. Right. Mm -hmm. So got all into personal growth. I actually decided to do a lead generation software at one point. Okay. The coding back in me, what people made fun of me right. were my biggest strengths. Partner with a business guy at a, a conference that kind of looks like this logo okay. uh, called Breakthrough, a uh, guy named Ahmad, and uh, sent him a lot of money, became the investor in the software. Mm -hmm. But really, we hired on a coding team, and that's what got me kind of to the point where I am today. That learned me a lot of the skill sets. You know, as okay. Mosey talks about building yeah. skill sets, 100%. 100% like that, yeah. When you, look at, when you look at that journey, we're still a little early in, in your entrepreneurial growth pattern at that right. point. You're learning how to 
potentially build a business. Right. What What were the key moments for you in deciding to say yes or no with regard to pulling the trigger at any given point in time over the course of the past couple of years? Two things: girls and God. Okay. okay. Tell me about that. So, let's unpack it. Yeah. Let's talk 100%. about the Let's talk about the girls section first. Yeah. So I will actually. So. Um, you know, I was broken hearted with the girl that I asked to marry me, right? Okay, yes. She wanted to marry the military guy for security. But at the time, I wasn't a man who could even think. I was more doing like, I love you, you should be with me. Like, that right, was my whole thing. Right, right. I really, my mom just died. I'm helping out my dad. I had nothing. Mm-hmm. I had nothing to offer her. No wonder why she married the guy. Absolutely. Like, I don't think, I personally think she <laughs> liked me more, but, yeah. but maybe that's just a story to tell yourself just to, like, you know, do <laughs> but it. But you wanted but, to be a high value man. Right. I mean, that's 100%. really sad. Yes. And I even knew when I was there, I knew I had to improve. Right. Okay. So and if, fast forward, I started helping out so many people. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs, and a lot of I say this being a teacher, you know, there's all these programs and everything that they get all these social programs. we got to help people out. Mm-hmm. But if you don't help yourself out first, mm-hmm. you're never going to help anybody else out. You know, you got to. Yeah. And that's paying yourself put first your, at yeah, any level. Put your oxygen mask on before you. Help the yeah, and we ca- next everybody knows yeah. it, but you just don't tend to do it. Yeah. Uh, even now, I think as entrepreneurs, even us, we want to help people like, well, you know, especially where it's at, you mm-hmm. know, this is my business. You have to respect my business. So yes. um, there was a girl I took to my brother's wedding, uh, blew up on Clubhouse, the app Clubhouse. Yes. Um, there was actually a time when I was in a room, I was modded up, which is a big deal to me when you get modded up. Because I, 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 we have another little book coming out on Clubhouse, okay. the stories and secrets. I actually just sent off uh, some chapters to the editor. Okay. But Clubhouse was a big part of my growth because... While I was still selling windows and I was bartending, okay, mm-hmm. I started giving advice on on marketing and copy, okay? okay, and people just started coming back. Jeff the Entrepreneur, I made 16k or whatever. Right now, that people put me, they've made a lot of money and they're saying it. There's like Grant Cardone on stage that, and they're like giving me credit, you <laughs> right? Know what exactly. I mean? So, and I and then I tried to, I did the biggest mistake to try and be more than I was. You know, okay. there was a guy who really came on, started hating me. I kind of, um, I grew my following uh, with with that guy, kind of really just always taking grants back kind of uh-huh. probably stayed in a little bit too long. That's why I realized, you know, where you're at, just trying to figure out people, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but I've always had a pretty good read on people. Um, always been very blessed on that. So the girl, uh, I, I didn't know who the girl scared, like even now, that's why I want to ask you about, uh, marriage steps. Women scare me. Cause I watched so many entrepreneurs get married. Is this your first wife or uh, second? No, wife? Third, yeah, third. See, this yeah. is what I'm saying, exactly. man. So, but part of me is okay with not even getting married right now. Yeah, okay, exactly. But you know, we, I'm a guy, and there's all this. Um, you know, as you start becoming more successful, especially I've been putting out stuff in there. Mm-hmm. You know, women uh, reach out to me for, for different reasons. Yes. Um, and I'm always putting them through my sales funnel. I get mad. They get mad about that, <laughs> but I'm like, hey, this is what we do. It's a process. We need a bigger brand. Exactly. You know? um, but anyway, me and my brother did a show on Clubhouse. Basically, uh, I ran. Hey, it's my brother. It's October 15th. My brother's getting married, and I still don't have a wedding date. <laughs> and so I had a bunch of girls. I had Patty Stan. Do you know that is Patty? Familiar, Shatter, she no. does a dating show. She like hated on me. She's okay. like, "You're doing it for marketing." I was like, "Damn right, I'm yeah, a marketer." Absolutely, why right? not? Yeah. So, um, but it wound up. I wound up the, how God has it. Mm-hmm. Um, this girl who really kind of caught me by surprise uh, wound up taking her. It's actually a pretty bit of a long story, but was actually supposed to take my friend. I called my friend. I said, listen, all these crazy girls, will you go with me? This girl, she's a good friend of mine still today, but she flaked on me a few times. You know, anytime I'd be wanted to hang out and get a coffee, I'd hit her up when I was in her right, area. Right. We'd always like hang out. Never anything more than that, but she's right. like a good friend. So I thought, she was all like, yeah, you got to buy me a dress, right? She didn't really bad <laughs> about this. So I was like, fine. So I put on my Instagram live. This is why branding's crazy. Exactly. Everybody's like, do not bring that girl. All these girls call me. Don't buy her. You know, right. like, so then this other girl, I'm out in LA for a consulting deal. Okay. One of the so he has a guy, it was this 64K contract I talked about that I sent out to this guy mm-hmm. to do consulting for. Um, my buddy, uh, Arturo, makes fun of me. He says, dude, you don't get any girls. I was like, could I get girls? <laughs> so, you know, but the guys. If they make it through flex, the funnel. Right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, you, I have qualifying questions. Oh, you know, absolutely. Gotta, are, you, are you a high-level woman? Are you in growth thing, right? Are you exactly. going to go with me? Right? It's not easy to be with entrepreneurs. Definitely not. So. This girl was in LA. I text her. I knew she was a good looking girl, so I knew it would get everybody mad. She comes out to dinner. Mm-hmm. We have a good time. Uh, I actually did this whole thing where I, I said to her, it was the line I go, Hey, uh, can can I go back to your hotel with these guys? I just want to shut them up, right? And she said, okay. Went back to her hotel. And it's funny because everybody's hitting on the girl and then uh-huh. we're dropped off at the thing. So it was just <laughs> ultimate. The whole <laughs> moment was very special. So she calls me two days later. I don't think anything of it. Uh-huh. And she's like, hey, are you taking me to the wedding? And I was like, 
uh, no, I'm thinking my friend, you know, this other girl. And she's like, well, you asked me a long time ago because I did ask, you know, okay. see who's going to say yes, right? right, right? right. probably rule of thumb, don't ask everybody because exactly. if you get a lot of yeses, how do you tell, right? So I canceled with the other girl because I didn't have to buy her a dress. It's not really that, but <laughs> had a few conversations, went with her. Um, we'll probably release it on YouTube, actually. It was called The Growth Wedding. I, okay. My brother's like, how do you do my wedding and make it about make yourself? Make it marketing, exactly. But, um, but it was a good branding branding uh, moment. But really for that, she saw the value in me. She saw people paying me like $5,000. You know, I'm trying to show mm-hmm. I can provide for her. Hey, yeah. this is where I'm at as consulting. She's like, listen, you're still selling windows. You're still bartending. Do you not mm-hmm. believe in yourself? Um, if that wasn't enough, I went back. I was at a conference, Grow for God. I'm yeah. literally down there praying and Mm -hmm. i'm like god am i really supposed to be this because people at this time are like jeff you know you remind me of tony robbins and this stuff and all this stuff that like i had brad do you know bradley yes so i had bradley i was sitting in his office one time gave him a gift and he said well maybe you're next man and i remember always being like well i'm not ready yet right Mm -hmm. and now like so i'm praying Mm -hmm. and i'm like god show me a sign am i supposed to be this consulting firm like who am i amongst these like all these other legends right Mm -hmm. like you like you know what i mean like for this, you know, and sure enough, um, pastor comes over, taps me on the thing and says, God says the answer is yes. And it was, I got chills. Wow. I actually did a YouTube video after I'm it. getting chills right Nobody now. Nobody watched. Yeah. And then, if, then this other guy, Paul, he was just on my live, comes over and goes, Hey, God just told me to pray for you right now. So, man, and actually, I'll say this. It wasn't just God. I went back and the girl said the thing, quit everything, <laughs> sold my four unit, moved to Florida. And here we are now. Wow. I, I think I, I'm, there's so much to unpack in that yeah. story. But I do want to touch on one thing. You, you, it seems to be a theme in everything yeah. that you're doing and touching is the concept of branding. Yep. How important is it for business owners to really focus in on the concept of branding? Oh, it's everything. So you can build up the level of success you have. There's a lot of guys. So my, my perfect client is guys doing seven figures and above mm-hmm. um, who really have all this knowledge and nobody knows about. You exactly. know what I mean? Because one thing I've done extremely well is get known about all the time, figure out how to do, you know, and someone said it, there's not so many great storytellers. Mm-hmm. Well, all marketing is storytelling. Absolutely. And branding. So I got really good at doing it. Just looking over copy to get it to self. We go from that. Um, I had my boy Danny here having me look over copy for an email. He's okay. like, how is that? I was like, it's good. He's like, yeah, it's converting. I'm like, yeah, that's right. Awesome. So that, that's, and I love that, man. You know, okay. I love that. But it's, it's, it's paramount. Like, you know, you think of Trump, right? Mm-hmm. Or even Andrew Tate or any of these big brands that are, are most Googled about, right? Absolutely. There. These names are brands. Like, mm-hmm. they tried to cancel Andrew Tate, right? The whole well, deal. they tried. <laughs> yeah. And because of his brand in his community, which is the one thing I'm obsessed with right now, this is why we're starting, uh, like, our own Elite War Room, right? Right. Which mm-hmm. has its own acronym for what Elite means, right? Right. And it's more being tactical and uh, empowering people and really doing it in, on my own version. Because I really believe that all these brands um mm-hmm. people people pay more for brand just the fact that 100%. like i see a lot of people you know hit on some people um patrick and david uh you know him obviously yeah. he's been huge the vault conference yes. that was what put it together i was actually at the point right before it and i asked a question of uh he goes what do you hey i go hey i think this guy wants to recruit me as a sales thing he goes, what mm-hmm. do you want I said, I'm starting my consulting firm. I, and I was like that. He's like, all right, write this down. And he gave me something to write down, went in there. Uh, and it was crazy. We were on a Beverly Hills rooftop. I still remember with the guy. And I asked uh, the question, yeah, I'm the only decision maker. And that 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 really built the, the structure for what we have now with changing that consulting. Now building our licensee model, which is awesome. Because I have something now, I can qualify people with our core creed, mm-hmm. um, which has really come from a lot of the vault training. We actually... Um, really tight with a lot of those guys there. So well, I think the second then point that I'm going to raise and, mm-hmm. and ask about is the concept of getting in the right room. Because right. that also sounds like it's a, a continuing theme with you. You're getting yeah. into the right rooms with the right people, asking yeah. the right questions, yeah. and then Always asking action. questions. And here's the thing, not being afraid. Like for branding, mm-hmm. if you go to an event, right, you go to the vault, you go to 10X, you go to any Whatever questions you can. Mm-hmm. However you get attention, like I'm wearing my logo here. Like mm-hmm. now the brand's the vest that we were talking about before. Right. Mm-hmm. Hermosi, even Tate. I got on Tate. I called Tate a tool. Mm-hmm. He might be the sharpest sharpest tool in the shed, you know? Exactly. Because literally, like he understood, like even with his glass and everything down, he was, you know, I was like, yeah, he's definitely that type of guy, right? Uh-huh. That like I didn't like for a while because they, they flaunted a little bit stuff, mm-hmm. right? And I always wanted to be relatable. Yeah. Um, so that's why, but I think everybody has, you know, their own confidence zone, yes. right? Like mm-hmm. I'm confident enough with me without anything, you exactly. know? And some people aren't. Some people need that, you know? And right. listen, it definitely works. Girls, cars, and money, at marketing has worked a long time. That'll Absolutely. always work well, right? Mm-hmm. But really getting in the right rooms, being around the right people is huge. Um, when the whole, um, 
George Floyd thing happened, I got so passionate because one of my things that I am passionate about, if I ever do run for president, right? Because mm -hmm. like, and now I've been praying about everything, Nora, now that I've accomplished so many goals, mm -hmm. I was on a call with a VC and he said, hey, sequence out your consulting firm. I have a bunch of people that if you want to run for president, man, they, they could get behind you. Mm -hmm. And it got real because once you start being confident about something and talking oh, about something, they, then things start happening. Mm -hmm. So like you want to get in the mirror every day and be like, hey, I'm the man. This is going to happen to me. Like I have the five things I do every day. And one of them is affirmations. It used to be I have a millionaire mind. Now it's I have a billionaire mind. Money's attracted to me and I yield to God who I'm called to serve every day. And you replace want with will. I mean, at yeah. the end of the day, I oh, want yeah. to be president. No, I will, will be, be president. president. No, it's powerful. I, well, yeah, I, I sometimes, and even now, um, here's the thing. I just see what's going on with the country, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why at any point, uh, we just acquired a short form video editing company. Okay. And the reason why is, you know, hater like all these guys, like I don't even totally agree with everything Trump says. I've said that many times. I don't agree with everything Andrew Tate says, although he switched his narrative now and yeah. he's realized it and I've seen it. My, my man, Patrick and David, did you see the interview with them? Yes, I did. Five, so I, five I did, hours on I did. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. I didn't watch the whole thing. Me and my brother are I watched the whole thing. That. You did? Uh, one of my, my team members said, you have to watch the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, so I just I watched them with the Nelk boys. You know the Nelk boys? No, I'm not familiar. Oh, uh, they're awesome guys. They'll probably be on my podcast. I actually just reach out to them. They're really cool two kids. Uh, they had Trump on theirs. It got taken down. Okay. Um, because Trump, I'm not even going to say it because we're going to put it up here. <laughs> Which is crazy that we're in the point of we can't yes. even say it. Like, it's I'll ridiculous. say it. That's a, that's a concept. For, out of respect to your thing, I won't say it. Yeah, yes. out of censor, censorism, I mean, it's just ridiculous. The mm. fact that we live in the freest country in the world and the crap. Is it? Is no, it really, is it is it really Dude, the freest? I, and I've said this I many times. The reason why I talk about running for president, I hope I don't have to run. I hope somebody else does, right? Mm -hmm. But my whole point is, is it's for the same reason of if we keep the way we are, we're going to be a communist country in 10 years. Like that's well, just I think the challenge that thing. we have, though, is we have to we have to correct the whole education system here mm -hmm. because everything is founded upon what the people currently understand to be yeah. true. Yeah. And the problem is it's not it's not really true. It's, right. it's what's being shown to them, whether it's through social media or, or the established media. At the end of the day, words matter. And if you start at a young age teaching people the wrong words and giving them the wrong meaning, they have right. the wrong understanding. Yeah. I mean, think about it, the whole concept of democracy. If I go out and I, I go out into to the streets of Miami and I ask the question, what is the, the most powerful democracy in the world? I'm, what do you think the response is going to be? The, most people are going to say the United States. Well, we're not a democracy. Yeah. We're a constitutional republic. Yeah. Words matter. Yeah. And if, if you don't understand how things actually operate, it's important. And when it comes to business, understanding how things operate is important. And you've learned those lessons. I mean, cause, so now you've, you're, you're transitioning, you've, you're, you've made a decision yeah. to, to stop with the, 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 the window sales and the bartending. Right, yeah. Now you're transitioning into getting into your consulting firm yeah. full force. Tell, yeah. tell me about that transition. You said you made a decision, yeah. how did it go? So a lot of people in life, like even at a lot of these events being intentional, okay. Mm -hmm you get to pick who you want up in your circle with you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we actually have like a pretty good pack of, of uh, CLC licensees. So I, there was a guy who was really good at marketing um, mm -hmm. uh, that I knew he had a heart for, for passion to help people. Mm -hmm. Really good guy. Um, police officer, just really good at ethics on where he was at. Mm -hmm. And he partnered with another guy who runs ads and he's like so fast. So I was like, okay, these guys are a part of it, right? Okay. Caesar and George, right? So that's going to take that. I'm good at, I built up a personal brand. Mm -hmm. I've been, everything that everybody wants, paid to speak, flowing out on stage. Everybody, how do you do that, Jeff? I've done it, okay? Right. So now I know how to help people do that, right? Exactly. I just had a guy the other day, he was kind of doing the, um, where are you at? Almost, and I don't, I don't, listen, there's a point of tough coaching, but I don't like when people like, like you got to be confident, sell or be sold, man. Absolutely, you know? 100%. So when people, he was telling me, man, what have you done? What's your package? Where are you at? And I started answering questions to him, started me second guessing everything, but I built a team with within, right? Mm -hmm. So when I started this thing, I said, all right, I'm going to only focus on two things, copy mm -hmm. and personal branding and brand message. That's okay. it. That's all I focus into. That's okay. what I speak on, stories and everything. Everything else. It. So if you want to build your personal brand, I take you through a six-week program. Everybody else, Mark and Adspan's him. That's all I focus on, okay? okay? Now, I built up a big brand as Jeff the Entrepreneur, now rebranding as Jeff J. Cunningham. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to take all these high-level uh, seven-figure entrepreneurs in the elite war room, have these guys that have an open invite or anybody who spent over 100K mm -hmm. in, um, in personal growth. Mm -hmm. That way we know they're, we're going to take them, you know, case by case scenario exactly. to build out actually people who can really just meet up. So we can actually create, um, you know, our own private equity bank is really the point of it. You okay. know, so you don't have to go to it. There's going to be a lot of things on sale with real estate and just build up a whole firm like that. You know, mm -hmm. me and between me and Danny and everybody, we're very well connected. So, and that's one thing I built up a huge network. Mm -hmm. So using that network then, right. Mm -hmm. So 
Changing Life Consulting. This is going to be our licensee, John C. Maxwell. You know who he is? Yep. Great leadership guy. Yep. He has this thing. We have a guy uh, who only studies his stuff. He's leadership and development and teaches that to companies. Okay. Then we have Systems and Processing. Uh, I'm paid brand ambassador for Progretta. It's a goal high-level white label. Okay. Um, and we use them. It means we care about your progression daily. Mm -hmm. uh, Andy O'Date, boom, he's a systems guy, boom. right? We're just yeah. working with his brand. Then, boom, I focus personal branding. The guy, June, who's really good in video editing, he's here, right? So now we everybody has their roles, boom, 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 so boom. we know where it is. And then we just come in, and then we pass everybody off into it. And where that happened was I've been doing coaching and everything just by helping people. When mm -hmm. I had my first software, I used to help them convert through the DMs. I had an Instagram yep. growth software. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing this for years, so it comes so natural. It's almost boring to me. No, you got to say this. I was on a thing, right? But that's how you know you're good at it, you exactly. know, when that's the boy that people are like, this is ingenious. Thank you so much. I've done this, you know? So... Just focus on that. Stay exactly in that. Um, and when, when you kind of stay inside your zone and the higher weakness is great. A lot of times I was, I was revenue sharing with other guys. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my coach or mentor said, hey, build up the most direct revenue, mm -hmm. which is what the elite war room and the inner circle wound up becoming. So that way, if I want to scale and exit it and run for president, I can't, you know. Mm -hmm. When you look at, at your journey, I mean, a lot of people would find it difficult to do the things that you're doing right now just yeah. because they, they may think they don't have the skill set. A lot of people are me. Exactly. True. Yeah. Yeah. But a lot of people aspire to, to right. accomplish something yeah. within their life. And yeah. there are certain skill sets that you do possess or, or at least you've cultivated within yourself. Right. For instance, getting to know people, the whole yeah. people skills yeah. environment. How did you learn? Was that something you learned or is that something you yeah, think was so, just natural? I mean, I was at a multi-level marketing thing, okay? okay? When the guy said two things. It was uh, Ambit Energy and they did Mel Luca, which, by the way, Mel Luca, you cannot do on social media, uh, <laughs> which I did a video. They got mad. And I used to take the packets at the restaurant I worked at. I used to sell them uh -huh. outside. I would go back, like, how much you make? I was like, oh, yeah, I sold the packet. You can't do that. You got to give them the membership. I was like, no, nah, I don't like <laughs> your rules. I, that's where we're entrepreneurs, right? right. My, my rules in point. But... Um, but two things, they told me, um, tell your old story to new people every okay. day. And I remember hearing that. And I actually okay. talked to Gary Vee just recently. And I said, should I keep doing this old story about the coffee shop? Like, now we're getting closer of it. And right. he said, yeah, do it, but do it with your new story too. So the right. new story is how we build a consulting firm, right? This right. has all been exactly. story-based marketing, right? 100%. So, and it's why people do a business with you. Like people, let me ask you this. Do you believe people care or people don't care? For the most part? Yeah, for the most part. For the most part, people don't care about you. Okay. They care about themselves. Okay, yeah, that, that's true, okay? And whatever you believe is the answer, right? Because mm -hmm. we have a reticular activating system. Correct. So if you believe that, right, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden, and that is true, that is true to a point, but my whole point is I believe people care to have such a In point. In general. Yeah, in general. Like yeah. someone, oh, we walk out and someone's going to open a door for me, right? Yes. They're, let's say, all right, drop some, someone picks something up, right? Yes. So yeah. they care, but that's more for me than them. Oh, correct? 100%. Yes. So you know what I mean? So I understand if what you, you mean. Program, I, there was a bartender girl I was sitting down with, and I said to her, hey, do you believe people care? I said the same thing. She said, people don't care. She was mm -hmm. very thing. And what my whole belief in life, there's so many people going around life believing people don't care. All they're finding is that people don't care. And right, like, right, and, they're right. and the reason why they don't care is because people are hurting inside. Yeah. If you just switch the belief that people care to a most part, right, right you're going to find the you're people opening the door. Exactly. Right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm going to find someone who took time out of your day, right, mm -hmm. with everything you're building out to have me on. Like, yes. And that's my thing. And maybe, you know, selfishly, you care more about what this will leave for you. But personally, I think you care more. You know what I right. mean? I so to that. do this and build it up. So that's that's and having that belief mm -hmm. um, just it, it strengthens you to go out there and share your story more. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing I learned this when I was pitching my software to VCs and adventure uh, Antonio White, the pitch freak. Um, great guy. He taught me this formula. That it, emotion, value, subtle call to action. He actually switched it differently, right? Okay. And um, it was basically, yeah, just, and I, I wound up using that because I definitely have high energy. I wound up using that in a certain way. Okay. And, um, yeah, I really just realized networking was the most important thing. Mm -hmm. I, I went to one event, and they said, you know, network with people around you. You don't have to network with the top dogs, you know? And I Why thought, not? well, if everybody listens to that <laughs> exactly. guy, I said, everybody's networking now. I'm just going <laughs> yeah, straight to the top dogs. Exactly. Like I wanted to like, no competition. I wanted to skip to the head and there was no Blue reason. Ocean. My whole, my whole belief was I'm going somewhere. Uh -huh. You're lucky to go with me. Exactly. And if not, you don't believe it, then that's your loss. You yeah, know? Absolutely. So I was with Dan Brazarian. Um, do you know Dan Brazarian? I know of. So, I don't know okay. Yeah. So I was at ringside at Jake Paul's fight, which mm -hmm. it's funny because um, Mark Zuckerberg, I guess was just ringside doing the same thing I was doing because Mark Cuban was there. Oh. So I'm at Jake Paul's fight. I took this girl. Uh, probably shouldn't have took her. She <laughs> tried to cancel on me. I took her at the last second, but that that's more of the journey there. But she was, she was, she was cool. Um, but I went over to where, do you know Dan Fleischman? Familiar. 
Awesome guy, really yeah. good guy, best guy in personal branding, uh, best guy, uh, I mean, I guess I should say I am, but he wrote a great book. If you can't do anything, read the book that he did on personal brand, it's awesome. Okay. Uh, connected with him on Clubhouse, his masterminds, his 100 million, like really good guy. But him, the, the real Tarzan, Adam Weitzman, you know him? Yep. Mm -hmm. So he's gonna be on our podcast. Uh, we're gonna do really good stuff. Every If you had to pick anybody that would rub off on me, mm. what Adam's done, what Adam's shared with me, in the short period of time we've known each other, um, has been, um, uh, has been, you know, just like paramount. And he, he does certain things that I implement that he does to me. Like, give me an example. Help me um, understand, make sure I... I was on the phone, I told him my story. Uh -huh. uh, and he said, Jeff, I said, what, what advice do you have me? He said, don't pretend to be more than you are. Yes. And every, and that was exactly what I always wanted to do. But I was at a point now, because I was getting flown out, I felt like I had to be more, right? Mm -hmm. And um, even now with um, Danny or anybody where I'm at, I'm very transparent on where I Just am. be who you are in right. the Right, and like a lot of times too, especially as you're building your business and you're getting people, you know, you're taking on Goliaths, right? And, mm -hmm. you know, people are saying stuff, people are looking at you like, well, who's this guy? How should I do this? Why should people listen to him? Like you right. get a little side eye like oh, yeah. that, right? Mm -hmm. But I already know what, what what's in me. I already uh, know what I can deliver. Exactly. So if you go from that, then it's fine. But that was the great message. And um, one thing he does is he'll send me a text or uh, appreciate you, my friend, right? Every once in a while. And I started doing that, you know, I love reciprocating that. it. And it was really good. Deanne Fleischman taught that too. And I've done that to 333. Three, three, three. Mm -hmm. three emails a day, three messages. I'll actually just reach out to some people on Instagram, send them a voice message, anybody I want to connect with. I love Those that. Those are all things you can do. Um, but yeah, that whole year network, I've realized, listen, nobody's going to remember how much money you exactly. did with me. But they're going to remember, like, they're going to remember true wealth is your name. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. so and and um, so I was like, I'm just gonna build the most known trusted name. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be as transparent as I am. I'm gonna really just find out something really valuable about a person and say whatever it is. Like I told you, I like your energy, right? Yes. I, I read all about all your success and stuff. And I thought, oh, this guy's gonna be like a stuck up <laughs> guy. And you're not anything like that. You I know? appreciate not that. bureaucratic, right? No. People get bureaucratic when they yeah. get to a level, right? And uh, Adam's not that way. So it, it's cool to see people like that. Because those are the people I want to be with. I listen, I think the reason why I'm one of the best marketers is because I know I don't know it all. I know there's a lot, and I, I surround myself with people who know it. And to do that, that's what it is, and I can call them at any time. Like, I probably have one of the strongest networks that people are like, man, why are people hanging out with this guy all the time? But it's literally by that, by just being myself. It's easy to see why, that. exactly. Yeah, and it, it, it's definitely now everybody wants to go up and get a cup of coffee with me all the yeah, time, yeah. you know? And I'm like, well. That's like the theme. Yeah, oh, my God. It's so. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, so. When, when you look at, at now that the business is going, and you're operating, you're, yep. you're building building an, an enterprise. It's yep. not just you, it's an enterprise. Right. What has been like the biggest challenge that you face so far? Because it's still relatively young. Yeah. But oh, what's yeah. the biggest challenge so far? Uh, biggest challenge, really very, very clear, is me um, wanting to do it all, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I, I used to watch uh, my old mentor um, when I... Uh, he was the real estate mentor guy that when Grant told me, hey, stop worrying about your software business, go work for everything. I work for a local multimillionaire, mm -hmm. just did his marketing as much as I could mm -hmm. and did sales for him. I watched him doing a lot. I was like, why is he doing so much, you mm -hmm. know? And now that I'm in it, um, but one of, my, one of my coaches or mentors kind of really made it clear, hey, you focus on this, let everything go out, do that. Mm -hmm. So that's really been it. But that was the biggest thing too because um, – you know, I think I care so much about the core values and the company of who's in it. That's what made me build the licensee model. Right. I don't want anybody wrapping my name as a referencee if they don't abide by our core values, right. you know? So that helped out a lot because I knew who was really on it so I could really trust. If someone gets on a call with June right now to do brand consulting message, look at videos, they're good. Before mm -hmm. I wanted to be on every call with that, you right. know? Right, because you weren't sure if it was going to yeah, represent no, your brand training. 100%. Like, leadership is, is passing on to one-to-one, -one, right? Oh, so yeah. spending all the time with June and getting making sure he's good to do it on. And I actually did the numbers with June. As I was bringing people, I said, June, this is how much money we were. I was flying out to LA the night and I did the numbers. He's uh, from there. And I, I did this, how much you're going to make without me. And I did it because I was scared of losing him. You right, know, right. I said, you can make way more money if you don't work with me. Mm -hmm. And I said, do you really want to do this? Because at the end of the day, I want to know what it was. True what buy drives people. Yeah, true, true buy-in. Because like, at the end of the day, we're, we're not like, the Bugattis are nice and all that's cool. I remember one of my teachers, I used to teach, she, was, uh, she wrote, I'll, I'll say this quick, this is probably giving me trouble, but she wrote on the board, uh, her name's Nancy, I don't want to say her all that, Nancy, she comes in there, teaches, she writes feminist on the board. She goes, what does that mean to you, right? Mm -hmm. And we're all sitting in there, and I go, a challenge, right? <laughs> and all of a sudden, everybody's like that, and I started hanging out with the, 
I started hanging out with the cool kids. She didn't like me right away. She docks me all the time through. I was probably her toughest student. But I remember her, that was the first time I heard the name Bugatti, and she put it out there. Now with Tate, you hear it all yeah, the yeah, time. Right. And she's like, we'll never see this in our lifetime. I didn't even know what the car was. I was right. like, speak for yourself. Exactly. I'll go get that in this lifetime. And uh, Adam has a Bugatti. He's part yeah, of the yeah, Bugatti yeah. Club, right? Mm -hmm. And um, there's different ways to do it. Um, I'm not a really big car guy. I'm really not. I'm, yeah. more, I'm not a flash guy, yeah, right? I, but I have learned just recently... Uh, one of the masterminds I went to, luxury cars, exotic cars go up in value, they hold their value. So to watch, typically, you can flip them. Typically. Yeah, and this guy has it down to science. So we probably will do it as investments. Yeah, it for depends, depends on the, uh, the depth of a recession as yeah. to how long they, they retain their value. But at mm -hmm. the end of the day, they tend to. Which we're going into in right now. Yeah, it, and it really, because they make less of it, supply exactly. and demand. You know, it's, it's very simple when it was. It's funny because now that I said it's very simple, I understand it. I remember when I was told retarded. And this is why it's so important who you're around. And I think every young man goes through the same journey. Heartbroken, feel kind of awkward, right? The whole deal. You like a girl, yeah. she breaks your heart, the whole deal, right? Yeah. And through that, you kind of just become more. And it's so important of who you're around and who's teaching you. I think what's going on right now with young men is they're around the wrong people. They're mm -hmm. getting coddled all the time. Um, and that's that's a lot of a big, a big part of, uh, um, you know, Andrew Tate's message. But I also think Patrick and David came out with a video on it lately. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of right now where we're at. Is I, struggle I was, is part of life, though. I mean, struggle yeah. is a part of learning. Yeah. I mean, a baby learns to crawl when its toys are just out of reach. Right. If you remove struggle... What's the quality of the learning that's taking place? Right, and that's what we're doing, though. We're trying to remove struggle and give the power to the government and everything going on forward on, right? Oh, right. we'll get covered in assistance. we got to take care of people. Exactly. This, I, this is a story. I was teaching. So I was a teacher's aide. One of the teachers was a behavioral middle school. Mm -hmm. um, kid, get my, the lead teacher gets a uh, concussion, right? Kids are rowdy. They were gang kids, the whole deal. Um Sums aboard. I become the interim teacher. This is my, like my first shot. Everybody's like, Jeff can't do it. He's crazy, all that, right? <laughs> so I, the, one of the girls I had a crush on, the, the head teacher girl, um, she, she kind of gave me the thing. I went in Monday. We read. I did structure totally. Monday, we read a topic, right? I had everybody okay. reading that. Tuesday, any vocabulary words we didn't know, I had them right on the board, right? Okay. I took the girl that is middle school kids that all that she was distracting. I had her up on the board. Uh -huh. I built a community of all kids around who did, all came from different places, all had different level learning abilities. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it was probably the most challenging, but the thing that gave me the most confidence. Right. Had her right on the board. I had everybody writing... Um, what is it? Uh, vocabulary words that they uh -huh. knew. And then on Wednesday, anybody who got the writing down, because I hate writing. Right. I, I've gotten better at it. But all the boys hated writing. Girls they had no problem writing. <laughs> and it's, it's basically how they were. You know, women, they're more uh, cultivators and more of that. Guys are more conquerors. They just want to yes. get on to the next level. It's mm -hmm. just kind of how God made us. But so she wound up um, she wound up writing out all the, uh, um, the vocabulary words. Anybody who didn't write them on, on Wednesday... I only took the people who got all the vocabulary words written on a fun project. Like, we are doing time zones, so we okay. did clocks. On Friday, I learned what the kids want. One kid wanted juicy fruit gum in the conversation. I typed it to the board. I said, anybody who gets 100 on the test on Friday on everything we're learning on the vocabulary words will get the juicy fruit gum. Okay. Truth be told, there's a kid, uh, probably the genius level, Elon Musk. Uh -huh. It's very similar. Have you ever read Elon's book? I have not. Great book. Uh, okay. Ashley Vance wrote it. It's the life inside. I actually, a lot of times, too, because of where I was at, mm -hmm. and I, the reason why I'm such... Uh, thing of everything, um, Elon Musk, I, I relate a lot to his childhood where he's at. Okay. Um, I wanted to buy a rocket when I was young. Okay. Uh, my, my parents didn't buy me a rocket, but my skateboard. I, I always, often joke that if they bought me a rocket when I was 12, uh -huh. I'd probably be up there with Elon Musk right now, right? <laughs> but fast forward to Tony. Tony is a kid, genius kid, studies books on science, space, the whole deal in the corner. People used to pick on him. Uh -huh. Kid wants juicy fruit gum. He comes and gets 100 on his test. So did the other girl. Boom, boom. They, we were, we were restricting them to learning because of what, because we coddled them as a system. Exactly. I get pulled in by the system and they basically say to me, Hey, these on their IEPs, you know, what IEPs yes. are, mm -hmm. they cannot be today. He says test anxiety. The kid's so smart. He knows to have testing. Who wants to take a test? Nobody. So I'm going to freak right. out every time I test, have test anxiety. Right. Exactly. So these are the things that we're limiting our, our kids by. I saw it first yes. as a little teacher. Um, and then at the end, I did most moment that made me feel like I could do anything. One of the first moments was all those kids in being quiet, mm. doing a test. And the girl told me it could be a teacher, see it all. And she just walked out like she couldn't give me any credit. Oh, you know, wow. so it was a cool moment. That, that was it. She also told me I couldn't become a lifeguard. I raised my hand to become a lifeguard. Uh -huh. uh, actually, it's a funny story. I tell it on the Amazon Prime um, 
video when I spoke on Amazon Prime. Uh -huh. But I I, uh, I raised my hand to be a lifeguard. She was, you'd be a lifeguard? Horrible swimmer, right? And so I said, you have, without a word, I'll do whatever it takes to become a lifeguard for right, everybody, exactly. right? I had to do the save on her to get my lifeguard license. Went out lifeguarding a few times after that. And then um, I, I was at a, 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 a dance with her. And I went up to her and said, hey, can you tell me I won't make 77 million? Because my brother had a tattoo, 77 to 99. That was the goal, the target we had to make. Because okay. uh, we win back his uh, family. And she goes, no. And I said, why? And she goes, you do everything I say you won't do. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, that, and that's, I think that's where I'm at right now in my journey. I have so many people believe in me. You know, I had Patrick and David, uh, I put it on the other day, say, hey, looking forward, you're doing next, you're very capable, right? Wow. And um, I love it, it's great. I had Tim Story, the first guy who prophesied over me. Um, just, these are legendary guys that I used to look up to. And now, um, I th now, now it's a better point, but, I always feed it off people saying, hey, you can't do it. Part yeah. of me talking about running for president, I just needed a few people to say, hey, you can't do it, right. you know? And and I saw, listen, I'm extreme capitalist in a point. I understand we have socialistic uh, reasons for a reason with it within a government to stand, mm -hmm. but not over uh, overdo it. And as I started studying everything, I said, hey, I'm going to be president. When I started saying, I've, I felt like I would get kicked back, right? Mm -hmm. um, everybody at my apartment comes, says, Mr. President, Mr. President, they're putting on my chat. I'm like, okay, this is getting kind of serious now, you yeah. know? So when Anne wrote a State of the Union address, like, you know, you always do everything yeah, yeah, in case absolutely. it has to happen, uh -huh. right? So just be ready for anything, you know? Uh, be active, stay paranoid, you know? Look mm -hmm. 15 moves ahead where we're at. Okay, this is it. I used to always joke and say, once I read Martin Luther King Jr., I grew up in a Pentecostal church, had no clue people judged each other by their, their skin, exactly. really. So I read a report and said, man, this is why, and they, they made a day out of this guy, and they treated him horribly. And I, I remember thinking at that time, there's two points. My mom homeschooled me. She looked up William Jefferson, Clinton was the president. I said, what number will I be? And then, um, and then Martin Luther King Jr., I, he had a day, and I was like, well, I want a week, man. I want to make such a thing. And this was me when I was young. You right, know? right. So I was always like, always you had passion and fire. So now's at the, the time. Beginning. Like right now, we're at, oh, yeah, I always had it and it always got suppressed by people I was around. Oh, he's a little different, always a little mm -hmm. odd, you know? And I was like, okay. I was like, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll conform, I'll conform, I'll conform. So the, there's, the, there's a shirt I saw at Hot Topic once. Why blend in when you're born to stand out, right? Mm. So, and I always think of that. And like, even now, I was just on Clubhouse right now. Um, and people always like, you know, make fun of me. And like that, that quote, probably my favorite quote was, first they laugh at you, mm -hmm. then they mock you, then they fight you, then you win. Exactly. Oh, dude, I love that quote, man, every yeah. time. Because that's been my story. Quarterback, when I went to go play quarterback, boom, boom, you know, boom, boom. lifeguard, everything. So, you know. So when you look at your journey so far, then mm -hmm. like you've achieved a lot in such a little time. Yeah. Well, no, no alcohol. Exactly. Less girls. That's what I was just going to say. Yeah. What are the, what are the contributing factors of that? Because yeah. a, a business owner is sitting, whether you're a business owner now or you're thinking of becoming a business owner, you're sitting back and you're consuming this content and they're saying, OK, I, this this Jeff guy, like, look at what he's been able to accomplish. I could never do that. Why could they? Like, what, what is, why is that limiting belief, it, it, why should it be shattered? Yeah, it's because everybody doesn't know what they're really doing with their time. Mm -hmm. They're not intentional. The most most valuable thing than money is time, right? Mm -hmm. Even spending, like, I appreciate all this time we're spending together, right? But it's really, like, uh, just managing it. Whether you take 50-minute mm -hmm. blocks and you just track exactly what you're doing, mm -hmm. uh, and you can color code it in a different way so you know where you're at, mm -hmm. Uh most of us scroll Instagram all the time, me included. Like, there's certain times I do where I'm not great with my time, mm -hmm. but really have someone who audits your time, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, giving up, you always have to give up something to get something more. And oh, people are, are so afraid to give up. Even me, man, I was afraid to give up. Uh, you know, I was at home in Connecticut, and, uh, you know, my dad was there. Everything was there. It was, it was tough, man. I'm not going to lie. I mean, you the know? reality is you have to be willing to give up who you are now to become the person you want to be. Right. Even now, like, dude, I was at the gym this morning, um, uh, and... I didn't want to, didn't feel like it, right? But then when you leave, it's so much better, right? You mm -hmm. never regret going to the gym. You'll never regret, like I encourage anybody right now, just do a time audit on your life, right? Mm -hmm. That you can literally just write down 50 minutes and just circle what's, what, 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 literally do this. Make a reality board. If you DM me board on Jeff the Entrepreneur, you get it for free. I used to sell it within all my courses, now I give away for free. Mm -hmm. Three images. I have a new one. I just built it with uh, the the Jesenia girl. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, on the live that I was telling you, but three images of three things you want in one year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then two things you've overcome in your life that you're proud of. One soul focus. Whatever your soul focus business is right now, it's a consulting firm and everything here. And then um, and then three to five year goals. Right. Okay. And then 
If you do that, okay, just, and I tell everybody, before you join my inner circle, I want to see that. Send me that, send exactly. me because I want to know what you want. If it's something I don't vibe with, exactly. if you have any satanic weirdo <laughs> stuff, you know, but there was a witch that was trying to work with me. Actually, I was like, oh, I'm cool, yeah. you know, um, but, but when, when I see that and I know, okay, this is what they want, especially because I'm pretty ne well networked. If I know what you want, exactly. maybe I can help you out, right? Exactly. So send that to me. I have everybody do it on the thing. And then when you do that, then audit your time, right? We're mm -hmm. coming out with a planner. One guy's helping me build a... He wants to call it Jeff the Entrepreneur's Daily Planner. It's your perfect day planner. Okay. Um, I've used multiple planners all the time. I don't like writing, so we built it out with just gratitude wins and everything. Mm -hmm. We're going to have on a point where you can track your um, time, 50-minute cues. Okay. Because then how you're spending your time. I, I did it when I was... Um, when I was selling, uh, when I was teaching, actually, I was teaching, I was still starting my software company when I was teaching. Okay. And I noticed it took up all this time and mm -hmm. I was making this little amount of money. I was doing video editing. They're teaching me Photoshop for it. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, this, this isn't right, man. So that's when I started looking for other things. And it's just that a time audit, knowing what you want, being very clear what you want, and then doing that. And if you really want it, right, you kind of need, like you said, it's going through struggle. There's got to be something inside of you that someone told you couldn't do that you can totally do, okay? Mm -hmm. We're capable. And here's the thing. It's perspective energy. The reason why I work so hard, there's a kid with one arm literally back at, um, at, at the restaurant my brother worked at mm -hmm. working harder than me wiping down tables. And I remember watching. I was so upset because I was going through the numbers as an entrepreneur. I'm sitting on my computer that I built that's not working. Um, that's why John bought me the computer. It was very, very awesome. Like just cool, cool moments, you know, yeah. on this journey. It's special, man. This is special. I, I'll admit that. Even now, I want to enjoy right now, mm -hmm. you know, because even people throw now darts all you at have. me. Now yeah, it's all exactly. You and this is so many people say, Jeff, oh, you're going to be so successful. You're going to be that. I'm like, what is that look like? Exactly. Like, this is, this this is pretty is where good I right am. now, man. Exactly. You know, success is the realization of where the idea actually uh, it fares me to have the next Starbucks. You walk into Coke and Jay's, oh, Jeff owns that, right? Mm -hmm. We have them all around in the worldwide. You go to Dubai, there's one. Yeah. It's like, what's next? So, a lot of times, just always, and I think this is every entrepreneur, you just got to keep going. You don't really slow down, you know? Yeah. So, um, I think that's, that's one of the main characteristics of an entrepreneur is that you don't have a break. Like, there, there's no brake pedal. Dude, I like, do you ever go to the beach, like, and can you just lie on the beach it, in the it's sun? It's difficult. It's very difficult. Right? Okay, thank difficult. you. Can I tell you something? I used to think there was something wrong with me because I had to go teach I, a beach I literally, ball. I flew, I was in Bahamas this uh -huh. past weekend with, like, uh -huh. my family and my kids. And, uh -huh. and they're, they're, like, playing on the beach. I, I went to sit down for a few seconds, and I couldn't do it. I had to get up. I had, I had to do something. It's uh -huh. very difficult. How, how many kids do you have? I two. Two little two kids? Yeah. So what's, well, let me ask you this thing, because I did ask this, because okay. my biggest fear is relationships now, yeah. right? Business partnership's cool, but even finding the right one. I, I said this before. I noticed, I said it to A-Rod on the thing, man. Hey, like all these Latino women, I don't know, man, they're very challenging, right? Mm -hmm. um, what's what's a good relationship type? I know it's work, but... So I'd say this. Yeah. When, you, when you really want to connect with someone, you want to connect with them through what I consider an ideal, constant courtship. Right. So... I think the challenge where most relationships fail is when you stop courting. Okay. Like, think about the energy that you have when you're initially dating someone. Right. You're, you're constantly trying to, to look your best, do your best, right. be your best. Right. And when you get into this, this thing of familiarity, right. meaning you're in a relationship with the same person for the right. same amount of time, for a long period of time, you become so familiar that you stop doing the things that made it special in the beginning. Right. And you stop stop being quote unquote attractive in the way that made you attractive in the first place, and that's with all relationships. Whether you're talking about an intimate personal relationship with with a partner, whether you're talking business relationships, yeah. it's the process of constantly courting that makes you stand out, and that can make you last the test of time. Yeah, because time's going to move forward with or without you. Yeah, and if you stop courting, that gives an opportunity Say for the courting, relationship. It sounds so like yeah, uh, like but, old school. But it, it, it should be dating. dating. Kinda, yeah. Like, what do you do when you're like dating? Yeah. Like, when you're when you're ta interested in getting someone interested in you, yeah. how how do you act? Oh yeah. Do you give me. it a little bit special attention? A little bit special? Like, what, yeah, what is I'm, it that I'm you do? Thinking doing? back to the last uh, last lady that I would yeah take out. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, you kind of you're on your best behavior. Let's exactly. say, you know, and that I mean, doesn't I'm still mean myself to a know, point. You're, you're still authentic. But, but yeah, no, no. But and you're I, doing I agree. the things that most people wouldn't. Yeah, do. Yeah, when I used to bartend, I used to ask people that same question. Mm -hmm. I'm actually, I used to go home and write in a Google Doc. Maybe I'll release the best. You know, thirty years. Don't mm -hmm. fight to win, fight to resolve. All these yeah, great yeah, wedding yeah. tips, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And um, one of the couples used to come in all the time. I actually just hit it the guy up soon. Uh, just recently, because keeping people in your your thing just to hey, I appreciate yes. you is huge. Um, and him and his wife used to come in for a date night every time. Mm -hmm. And it was just really awesome. They used to talk. Uh, I don't think they liked when I was with waiters that much because I would be like, this is what happened next. The, yeah, the so. guy liked it because he was all entrepreneurial. And she was just like, we got to talk, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, 
But yeah, but just really, I think having that, having the constant date. I, there's a guy named you, uh, he's a millionaire mentor guy, Jason Stone, him and his yes. wife, mm-hmm. you ever see him? So they're always doing vacations and all that stuff too. And mm-hmm. I think innovative campaigns, even marketing, right? Yes. Having an innovative campaign for your relationship, like I was just thinking about this now, part of us doing the Lee War Room and Seven Figure and this whole thing we're going to be doing um, with everything is for my licensee guys so they don't get stagnant, so they can have someone come, so I but can I, do it for them. It's also you know? important to make sure that you have the right roles set up. Yeah. In, a, in an intimate relationship. Like, yeah. What role do you take within that family? What yeah. what role is she going to take within that family? Yeah. And make sure that you are have the same vision, essentially, for right. the, what those roles mean and yeah. how they should evolve. The other thing, though, is you have to be willing to evolve with. Yeah. Because the, the reality is the relationship is going to progress over time, and yeah. you are going to be growing over time. So the challenge is, what I also see happening, especially with entrepreneurs, is an entrepreneur will get into a relationship with someone at this stage of their life, the entrepreneur has now grown to this stage, and this person did not grow in the same way. Right. And now there's a lot of disconnection. Yeah. And that's where a lot of relationships break down. Yeah, no, 100%. And that's, that's always what I see a lot of times. Mm-hmm. Like, even with people, actually, one of the guys I was consulting that was out there, I was like, how can we include your wife more? She has to have a marketing background. Yes. You know, I didn't want to really be doing so. I was like, answered every call. So I'm like, she's good. Let's empower her, you know? But it was good, though. And then she was actually really good. She was doing stuff together. And I saw how much it brought the relationship yes. together. Mm-hmm. Not even the, re- the relationship was fine. I don't want to say anything about that. But it just brought the business side. And it enhanced always it. at work. She knows it. Yeah. Exactly. So, like, that's what I'm looking for. People always ask me what I'm looking for. Um, I always would joke and say, free labor. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, you got to make me in trouble for that. Hey, but, hey, hey. but my point is, someone had a mission because when you're starting a startup or you're in a business, right? Yes. Like all the time, I take the least amount of salary. I'm paying everybody else, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, that's a kind of, I guess, an ego thing too. I like doing that. You know yeah, what I mean? Absolutely. But like, I, I really do. I, I realize there's obviously there's tax benefits to it too, but there's also a point of um, like knowing that I have, you know, what I have that the Lord will provide, really, right? God will provide where I'm at. Um, and, you know, certain things, any and, and knowing that everything's my fault, I think that's a big thing, you know? I'm a huge stoic, so I, I right. 100% agree yeah, with Yeah, right? Like, and that was where it was. When I used to be, if you knew me, I'm 37 now. If you knew me when I was 22, man, I would shuck and jive. a good communicator. Mm-hmm. That stuff's not my fault. I used to get my brother. My brother, Josh Lewis Growth, he's great. Uh, he's a lot of the reason why for growth. He used to always say, Jeff, nah. And I, I, I asked him, dude, how are you so good with all these arrogant people? You know? And he's, cause I used to have to deal with you. <laughs> so now I have a hard time. It's so true. I have a hard time. Uh, I, uh, my biggest fear is to go back to that. Right. Yes. Like one of the things that does rub me wrong. And I understand there's a point for it by like maybe the Andrew Tates or stuff like that is that they have this level of arrogance yes. that I'm like, ah, where, 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 where's, where's it missing inside? Right. Yeah. Um, but I was actually wrong kind of about that kind of. Some of it's I don't, just brand. I don't consume. Yeah, exactly. A lot yeah. of it's brand. And like what I, when I realized with Andrew Tate, he was joking a lot of the time. Absolutely. You know what I mean? For it. Like, and people didn't take it. They took it serious and stuff Absolutely. like that. And, um, but my, my whole point with all these brands and like people ask me, would you have Andrew Tate on your show? And at first it was no. And then I watch, you know, you watch yeah. people buy their uh, thing. And it, sometimes to me, it's not always about clicks. It's about my name. Right? Exactly. Who do I associate myself with? Exactly. Right? That's why I looked you up before I even came on here. Okay. Who's 100%. this guy? What's he about? You know, because there was actually another podcast podcast that asked me to come on and nothing against weed and everything like that too they do a whole like you know a hippie days thing right. but i don't smoke weed i feel like it yeah. slows you down um you know to like so i'm not going to be about that you know exactly. what i mean i'm not going to endorse that you know 100%. And, and listen so i'm not so desperate for attention where i need to go on everything and i think mm-hmm. a lot of, that's what people do a lot of wrong because we're in such a clickbait thing yes. you're just going to put up everything hey if i really want to talk about you know, Elon Musk, let me talk about Elon Musk. I'm not going to talk about him just because I don't want to. You know, I think right. it's awesome that he bought Twitter. You know exactly. what I mean? I'm on Twitter all the time, you know? JJ, I have a blue check right there, man. Twitter <laughs> blue, you know? Proud of it. Awesome. You know? awesome. Uh, one of the things I, I like to do with all the guests that come on is I like to do a little bit of a thought exercise. So okay. if you wouldn't mind, yeah, would you join me? Yeah. So I want you to imagine for a moment that you have the capability of going Should I close back my in time. Eyes? You can if you'd like. No, okay. okay. <laughs> Uh, but imagine that you have the capability of going back in time. Mm-hmm. And I want you to imagine that you're going to go back and visit a younger version of you. Mm-hmm. And you have the chance to tell that version of you one thing. I want to know, who do you go back to visit? Okay. What age are you? What's going on in your life? And what is it that you share with them, that younger version of Jeff? Yeah, just go for it. Okay. Like, so who are you going to see, though? Like, what age are you going back to? So literally uh, going back to the girl... Uh, it's always a girl with me, man. Uh, <laughs> playing capture the flag, I went to it right away. Um, she she was a church girl, so she had her long skirt on, and the flag was there. And I want to dive under the skirt, so you know, you know, yeah. Um, I think we wind up doing it anyway. 
And I wind up, at, at that moment there of just me hesitating uh-huh. is why um, the perfect moment is when I didn't hesitate. Even me asking her to marry me years down the road, mm-hmm. if I went for it a little bit sooner, might have had a better chance, you know? Right. So literally that guy, I was probably like 12, 11 years old. My mom was still alive. And I was too scared of what she thought of me. Obviously, I liked her. And I was scared of what everybody else would thought of me. You know, if I really just went for, you know, that moment sooner, um, I think, you know, maybe it wouldn't have played out like I am now. You know, I probably wouldn't have been entrepreneurial. But, um, but yeah, that's, that was basically it, man. I should just go for it. And that, it's funny because um, one of my mentors says, fear is a direction, right? Mm. And it is. Think of anytime you're afraid, you're either retreating or going forward, mm-hmm. right? And everything we know, anything more, like I'm now I'm learning about um, – uh, mergers and acquisitions and profit share models, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of times I was going out there hunting and killing. And it's it's kind of uncomfortable and, 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 you know, think, but it's essential to grow my business, you oh, know? Absolutely. So, so that, that was, um, that's what we started implementing now. And, but it was fearful at first. Like, oh man, why do I have to learn this? There's a new level, right? Uh-huh. I don't want, so there's certain points of that. And I think, you know, just knowing fear's direction and going for it, like that point. Yeah, just right then when I was young, like I wish I knew that sooner. Might have had a little different of a life now where I'm at, you know? I'd like be married by now or married three times by now, <laughs> you know? I like to say that the, the outcomes that I desire are, are always found on the other side of caution. Yeah. So taking action, being willing to take action, moving first, yeah. being the person who says, okay, yeah, I'm not going to hesitate, just going to do. I like to say that again? Uh, outcomes? The outcomes that I desire uh-huh. are always found on the other side of caution. They're never on this side of caution. That's true, yeah. The ones that you truly desire. Now, there are out- outcomes, obviously, on this side of, of right, caution. Right. But those aren't the ones I want. Yeah, that's good. I like that. That's good. When, when you look at it, the second portion of this thought exercise now is I want you to imagine that a future version of Jeff comes back to us in this moment, mm-hmm. in this setting, sits ne- right next to you and has a chance to share something with you. What is it that he shares? Well, right now, talks to me where yeah. I'm at. Yeah, so a future version of you. Yeah, I know. I, I've done this often. Uh, Hermosi talks about this. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's enjoy now, you know, because yeah. I'm so like, like, here's the thing, like, and I've been very blessed, like people put me and maybe I put myself or position myself up there with like these thought and I, it's not even a thought leader, man. I'm just I'm literally just trying to help people market and brand better. That's it. And I want to build a brand as big as Trump, if not bigger than Trump. Right. Mm-hmm. Then that's why I admire what Andrew Tate's done in a short time, you know, or yeah. Jake Paul, too, man. You know, exactly. I was at Jake Paul's fight for a reason. I, I respect the heck out of Jake Paul. I'm um, just going in, having all the money and doing it. And even Jake Paul, man, you know, enjoy where you're at right now. Enjoy the grind. Enjoy the different, even enjoy the struggles. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? But really just enjoy this. Like, I think a lot of times I get so discontent, especially with people putting such a stigma on me because I cast a vision so well mm-hmm. um, that like, oh, you're not there yet. You know, like wherever there is, you know, yeah. and it's really like. I'm going to be old eventually. Like, really enjoy this moment right now. You know, like, really enjoy Like, really, hey, I appreciate you so much. You know, 100%. like, really be appreciative for this. Like, I have my health right now. One yes. day I'm going to be sad. You know, one day my dad's alive right now. I'm, very, I'm going to call him when I, right now and tell him I love him. One day he, he's, he might not be here. People might die, right? There's going to be a day to be sad. I might have a flat tire, right? Mm-hmm. Right now where I'm at, you know, it, I'm very grateful for what I have, right? So don't get upset. Like, I was with one guy was upset because they didn't have his chocolate chip cookies. One of those bureaucratic, <laughs> you know, guys. And he's like, upset. like, I don't care if you mess up my food. I don't care if it's cold right. like that. Like, I'm so grateful for everything there. And if I ever find myself in that, really have someone to check me on that. Like, hey, enjoy now. You got everything going for you now, you know, kind of. I think that would be a big thing, you know. So the, the younger version of Jeff got some advice. Mm-hmm. The present version of Jeff got some advice. Mm-hmm. I don't want the audience to feel left out. So what, what piece of advice would you give this is a good setup individuals? Too, this, yeah. well, thank you. Um, um, like what piece of advice would you give to someone who's consuming this content right now who, who may be either thinking about starting a business, maybe they've been in business for a decade or two? Yeah. Like what don't, is a nugget don't, of wisdom? Don't be afraid to share your story. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think so many people are. Um, and kind of the freeing point was me. I told multiple stories in this, right? Mm-hmm. Um, there, there's something like powerful because like we all watch people, we oh, watch so. movies, mm-hmm. we listen to things. They're all stories, Everything right? Is story. And everybody's so ashamed of where they're at in a certain way, and you just shouldn't be, man, because everybody's struggling, everybody's trying to figure it out. And if you just share authentically where you are with your story, mm-hmm. um, like that's that's what I love doing. I love taking people who just don't know how to, or maybe they do, but they just need a little bit of tweaking on it. And I love I love exemplifying that and blowing up if it's if it's the right story for the right reason you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. but that's it don't be afraid i see so many people afraid put their face out there um 
and that, or even get a, a voice or a podcast. Just start putting your brand. I think content. This is part of why we acquired Viral Alchemy in a content company, and I love what you're doing here. Mm -hmm. Is is the biggest thing right now in recession to do is get content out there, 100%. get message. Don't and also, the, uh, you know, do do some talk about only what you've done. You know, there's a lot of uh, Patrick and David talks about this. There's theory, right? And that's I was a teacher, right? So yeah. I read from a book. I had to teach yes, on time zones, exactly. right? Right after. So I was the theory guy. So I was very good at that all the time. Which is when I started consuming Grant's car, car, content. That's why I went around to all other people because. At the end of the day, it's all regurgitated anyway. Yeah. It's research and development. It's just who do you like? So if exactly. you have a good energy, people are like, no, I want to learn from Jeff. Exactly. No, I want to learn from you. You know, whatever it is, they'll go to. You know what right. I mean? So just get out there, get known. But there's there's theory, there's witness. You know, learning from uh, the multimillionaire mentor that I learned from at the time mm -hmm. and just serve. I learned so much stuff there. And then there's applications. Now I've done it for myself, mm -hmm. done it for other people. Right? We have the first guy who made 10k in one day. I still remember. Still my favorite thing because that was a moment I was like, oh, if I could do this for him, I could do it for anybody. You know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. That was still when I was doing that. So I think a lot of it is just get your story out there and really get content out there. You know, mm -hmm. get 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 content for your business, your message, wherever you're at. If you don't even have a, a business right now, I think you'll help more people with your story inside, mm -hmm. wherever it is. And you know, people get mad like, don't write a book. I think everybody should write a book. Everybody has a story. Mm -hmm. I think you have it in you. I think it's uh, cathartic. I think if, if what we did in school, if we had kids write about. And we, I want to change the education system. We are in a certain point with all the education we're putting out. Yeah. But really, like, the uh, thing, if we had every kid, maybe when they're 12, write a story about their life kind of, and then write a story then of who they wanted to be. Just did that one exactly. exercise. Mm -hmm. um, I did that with the 7K coach I went for thing. And it's actually funny. What I wrote down, that big picture assignment, uh -huh. um, literally right now is exactly where I might talk about complimenting a run for president, uh, looking at opening my first Kokomo Jays. It was five, and it's been five years since then. So I think if we did that to kids, we'd have a lot more success. We'd know where they want in life. Exactly. And we wouldn't just put them in boxes, you know? That's so, so powerfully true. Yeah. So powerfully true. Jeff, this has been amazing. And this I know that really everyone, good. everyone is cons who's been consuming this is like, they're, they're sticking to it because everything you're sharing is awesome. How can they get back in touch with you after this episode's final? Like, what, what's the best, best way for them to reach yeah, so out to you? As long as we didn't say anything that's going to be uh, canceled from yeah. here, too, as well. Probably the best way uh, the best way to get directly to me is on Instagram, Jeff the Entrepreneur. Okay. Although we are rebranding, we're getting, um, we have brandisforever.com. That kind of goes over kind of what I do. Brand is forever. Brand is forever because I, I believe it. That's mm -hmm. what we just uh, bought that for. Um, but th those are probably the best ways. Um, you know, at, we're on Twitter, JJC Entrepreneur uh, on Twitter. I know you're supposed to have them all m marked together. I, I like being a little bit different, I guess. Okay. Uh, I couldn't have the thing, but. Um, yeah, tweet me is really the biggest way. I'm very active on Twitter because of Elon Musk now. Okay. Uh, I told you when I stopped and Elon's going to be on my show, people yeah. laughed at me. <laughs> um, uh, but I, you got to believe stuff. You got to go out there and talk it where it is. Uh, he's a top E, right? Yes. So, um, so yeah, so you want to want to make sure, um, yeah, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. I'm Jeff J. Cunningham on YouTube. We're going through a whole rebrand from Jeff the Entrepreneur to Jeff J. Cunningham. Okay. Sounds a little bit more presidential, yes. more than that. You know, always rebranding. A little less documenting, a lot more teaching now. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll still document. Um, I have a few. We're going to have a few other accounts uh, pop up as us as well, too. But Jeff the Entrepreneur, JJC Entrepreneur on Twitter, Jeff J. Cunningham on YouTube, brandisforever.com is probably the best one. And then we have a few other uh, things coming out soon, but that's the best way. If you just search my name or Google me, some guy you said to it. me, uh, man, what's your Google? What do you get if I Google you? And I was like, I don't know when I Google myself. I was like, yeah, that's pretty good stuff out there. So, <laughs> so yeah, so you just, um, you know, I'm just, I'm so inspired by everything that you're doing. I think it's amazing what you've been able to accomplish in, in such a relatively short period of time. Uh, it's awesome what you're doing. It doesn't feel like a short period of time. I'll I say know. that. I feel like I've been doing 40 years within six years. Yes. I, the Ed Milet's six mini days. You know what that yes, is? Yes, yes, yeah. So that's another thing. That's another thing I did for a while, three days into one. one. Mm -hmm. um, and I was doing a lot of this while I was still selling windows and bartending. Yes, and I was yes. still being productive. Now we're all in it. So now you're, you're about now to Now you're see, ultra productive. Oh yeah, 100%. Like we're actually, like I, I kind of, and I think this is true for every entrepreneur. Yeah. You know, losers, they feel like they don't get a lot done. You know yes. what I mean? They feel uh -huh. like, um, uh, and winners, or losers feel like they, they, they get more done than they really do. You okay. know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. And then winners feel like, they didn't get enough done. Yes. Right. And I think every day I look on, we'll do our five wins or we'll go over like the KPIs with the team and we'll, I'll be like, Oh, actually we did pretty good. Oh yeah. We actually did that. I, yeah. You know, but I, I have such high standards for myself. Um, that, you know, and that's good. I don't, I don't ever want to lower the standards. The yeah. reality is whether you're a loser or a winner, you have the same 24 hours. So how are you going to spend it? Right. Exactly. Right? Yeah. That's so true. So this has been amazing. Yeah. I appreciate you being so authentic. Yeah. I appreciate you sharing so genuinely from every aspect, pretty much, I think we touched on almost every topic here. Yeah. 
I just want to thank you so much for coming out. I know, I know that the audience has loved it, yeah. and I can't wait to uh, see what you're going to do next. Dude, yeah, I can't wait to see uh, how this all comes out, man, because this is, this by far, this is another moment of making it, by the way. So if you can be on Entrepreneur Unleashed, uh, I definitely uh, encourage it because it's just been great hospitality all the way through, and just uh, I, I, lo- I love studios, man. I love this. I think the power through anything changes through communication. 100%. So um, definitely that's part of reason why acquiring the team, and you know, I'm very eager to see you know what you do next as well. You know, Awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Guys, you've watched another amazing episode of Entrepreneur Unleashed. I, I'm, I know for a fact that you've loved every second of it. Be sure to click that, that thumbs up button, not just because it helps me, but because it actually helps you too. You know, when you tell the algorithm what it is that you like, you'll be fed more content like this. So be well, be be genuine in everything that you're doing, and make sure you keep putting one foot in front of the other. It's been another episode of Entrepreneur Unleashed. My name is Edward Collins. I can't wait to see you on the next episode. Bye for now. It's been awesome, man. Thank you so much. Awesome, dude. That was was great, man. We didn't even have to get into the the boxing match. I know. This is, well, you're going to have to come back. That's what it's going to tell you. Yeah, no, dude, this is especially because I'm in Miami. And when I have my uh, setup done, too, if not, I have to make more money.